Hi, Marcel here to show you the new object time ranges and deformable mesh collision objects in the new Lucid Physics beta build for 3ds Max. Let's start off with the object time range feature which is new in this build of Lucid. So I'm just going to quickly create my collision plane and add an inflatable sphere. You can remember how easy it is to start the simulation by just pressing the simulate button and scrubbing the timeline. And by default the sphere just kind of bounces on my collision plane. And this happens as soon as the simulation starts, so if I record my simulation right now, it's just going to start at zero frame and end at the last frame of my active time range. But if I want to insert my sphere into simulation at a later time, there was no way previously of doing that. In this build, we have added the new time range feature into all objects that can participate in the Lucid simulation. Time range can be activated using this time range checkbox. Once activated, you can specify the starting time and the ending time of this object inside simulation. So let me set the start time to something like 20 and the end time to something like 70. One important thing to note is that when you do use the time range, you also have to manually set the particle radius. This is something we might address in a future build of Lucid, but for now you just kind of have to do it manually. So I'm just going to set the radius to 1, and you can use the different radius if you have different units set up inside of your scene. So now if I start my simulation, at the very first frame the object is not going to be simulated, but as I scrub and as I get to frame 20, it starts appearing in the simulation and then as I continue scrubbing at frame 70 it stops being simulated and kind of freezes in time. So if I record this the object respects the time range parameters. Time range is applied to all simulated objects inside Lucid, not just inflatables. So in this example I created three planes and assigned them the static collision object type. And for each one of these planes, I have changed the time range slightly to allow them to disappear at different times. So the plane at the bottom will appear throughout the whole animation. The plane in the middle will appear at frame 0 and disappear around frame 60. And the plane at the top will start at frame 0 but will disappear pretty early at frame 30. So when I do the simulation here, the sphere lands on the first plane, which disappears at the frame 30, and then it falls through to the second one and then it falls through to the last plane at the bottom. And if I just record my simulation, this still remains the case. So this just demonstrates that collision object, just like any other object in Lucid, can also use time ranges and appear at different times inside your simulation. And just to show that time ranges also work with fluids, I have created the scene where each one of these three fluid balls is being inserted into the simulation at different times. And the results can be quite interesting. And I think this can really expand the scope of possibilities when it comes to creating simulations containing multiple objects inside of them. One other new feature in this new build of Lucid is the Preserve Initial Velocity option. And what this allows you to do is to have Mesh animated before it becomes part of the simulation and then transfer the velocity of this animation right into the Lucid simulation. So to demonstrate this I just created a sphere which I'm going to throw up using standard animation keys. I'm going to go to frame 20 and just offset it vertically and the right now my sphere just moves up a little bit. Next I'm going to go into my Lucid Flex settings and at the very bottom it is important to uncheck automatic particle velocity and to set it to something bigger so that particles are not restricted in any way by flex. Otherwise their velocity can be restricted to try and preserve the simulation integrity. Now I can just select my sphere and use the time range checkbox to set the start frame at frame 10 which is the last frame of my animation. To enable the new feature all I need to do is check this preserve initial velocity checkbox and I have also gone into my curve editor and adjusted my last keyframe which ensures that the sphere will indeed be accelerated up as opposed to being slowed down as it was by default. So when I do that and afterwards when I simulate my scene you can see that the sphere indeed gets thrown up into the air before it lands back down. So this new feature can really help in gaining more control and power over mixing traditional keyframe animation with dynamic simulations provided by Lucid. The last thing I wanted to introduce is the new signed distant field collision objects. And these simulated object types allow you to have deformable meshes collide with other Lucid geometry. So in this case I just set up a quick cloth mesh 
which has enough segments to deform properly. And then I have my teapot onto which I'm just going to throw a squeeze modifier, which will deform it and ensure that we are indeed properly deforming the teapot and not merely moving its transformation matrix. So it is going to kind of bump our cloth mesh upwards. And this is what we hope to get. So now that I have this, I'm just going to uh, set the default static or animated collision object to add my Lucid modifier. And then I will change the body type to SDF, which stands for signed distant field object. And if you want your object to be deforming during simulation, you have to check this is dynamic option, which will make it essentially dynamic. It is also important to have your resolution value set at something not too low, which will make the resulting object too coarse and not too high because that will slow down your simulation speed. So now that I have this set, I'm going to press record and you can see that my cloth gets impaled by this teapot over here. And the reason why it is impaled is because our resolution is not too high, so we can bump it up, redo the simulation, but this will also mean that the speed will slow down a little bit. Signed distant field objects are very good for having an animated mesh collide with something like cloth, and it could represent a character's body, for example. But there are a few limitations at the moment, number one of them being the speed, and then we also have the fact that you can only have one of these objects in the scene at one time, and this is something that we have contacted NVIDIA about, and hopefully they will resolve this in a future build of Flex library which we are using. So I hope you guys found this week's video useful and that these new features will help you in your simulations. Thank you.